Jacob is a shepherd and Laban is a shepherd and Laban's other children are shepherds. But something starts to happen. The sheep that and the cattle that Jacob takes care of become healthier and more numerous. And it's very, very obvious that something is going on here. And the thing that's going on here is that Jacob is being blessed. And Laban knows it. And so in verse 27, Laban says to Jacob, I know that God is blessing you. I know that the Lord is blessing you. So um, tell me what I will, should give you. And then in verse 30, he says, what shall I provide for you? Now, Jacob says something very important in verse 31. He says, you're not going to give me anything. He's saying two things there. He's saying, don't act like you're my great benefactor giving me gifts. You're not. I'm earning everything. But the reality is God is my benefactor. God is the one giving me these things, not you. We saw this principle back in Genesis 14 when the king of Sodom tried to reward Abram. And he said, no, I'm not taking anything from you. Because Abram realized that his true benefactor was God. and He would not receive anything from the hand of the king of Sodom. In this situation, Jacob will not admit or recognize that Laban is the one blessing him because Laban is not the one blessing him. God is the one blessing him. Now, Laban, uh, Jacob makes a deal based on the genetics of animal husbandry. Does Jacob know anything about genetics? No. But he does know that, that more of a certain color of sheep are born than another color of sheep or goats, or camels, or donkeys, or whatever it is that they're, that they're raising on the farm that they have there. And so Jacob makes a deal. I'll take a certain color, color, I'll take a certain color of the sheep and the goats, and you take another color. And what happens is that uh, everything good is going on in Jacob's flock, and everything poor is going on in Laban's flock. Now, here's the, here's the strange thing. And this is one of the strangest things in the Bible. We'll just admit that it's very, very strange. In verse 37, Genesis 30, verse 37, we're told that Jacob did something with wood, with wood which had been carved down and shaved the bark off, that he did something in such a way to, to, to allow the animals to see those different colors of wood and the assumption is that those animals seeing that wood will have some kind of influence on the color of the, the young animals that they bring forth. Now, did Jacob believe that? Yes, he did believe that. Was it superstitious? Yes, it was superstitious. Was it true? No, it wasn't true. Is the Bible teaching that it's true? No, the Bible is not teaching that it's true. Now, we got to stop for just a minute and talk about this because we talked about it a little bit when we talked about the tree of knowledge and the tree of life in the Garden of Eden and how when Adam and Eve were thrown out of the Garden of Eden, God talked about how if they ate from the tree of life, then they would live forever. Let's go way, way back. Is it possible for a physical thing to have a spiritual deposit? Is it possible for a natural thing to have a supernatural significance? Well, yes, it is. Let's answer the first question first. Is it possible for something that's just physical to really have something spiritual inside of it? Yes, it is. That's what you are. Each of you is a body, but each of you has a spiritual deposit called a soul. 
You are a physical thing. But God has placed in you a spiritual deposit called a soul. God can do that. God can do it with a tree. God can do it with the tree of knowledge, which means death. God can do it with the tree of life, which means life. God did it in the Garden of Eden. God does it with every human being. He takes a physical thing and He puts a spiritual thing inside of it. And He endows it with a spiritual significance. God does those things sometimes. Now, what is superstition? Superstition is when we believe that a physical object contains a spiritual significance or a spiritual reality which it does not contain or have. So there are a few, a very few, real areas where God may invest a spiritual significance in a physical thing. Another time He did it was with the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant had a spiritual significance. But the Ark of the Covenant was a spiritual thing. You see, it happens sometimes, very, very rarely. He did it with the staff of Moses, the rod of Moses that he threw down. Remember? God can do it. God has done it. But superstition believes that it's happening all the time everywhere when it's not. In your country, <laughs> I got to be careful here. I want to be gracious and courteous and respectful. But in your country, the dominant religion, in my opinion, attaches spiritual significance to things which do not have spiritual significance, which do not have spiritual properties. This is not godly worship. This is superstition. Now. The mandrakes did not have the power to make Rachel have a baby. That's superstition. Those pieces of wood did not have the power to make those cattle bear more abundantly. That's superstition. But here's one thing the Bible is teaching us. These people are mostly pagan, okay? These people have not been weaned thoroughly from paganism. They're just getting to know the one true God. They really don't know Him very well yet. That's what the Bible is about. It's about people getting to know the true God. Remember, they're still in kindergarten. Kindergarten means polygamy. Kindergarten means false rituals. Kindergarten means superstition. Kindergarten means there's a lot of paganism left, which hasn't been rooted out of these people yet. And it'll take a long, long time to root it out, to get it out of them. And we read these things and they seem bizarre. But God is teaching us. God is teaching us historically what happened. It really happened. It's embarrassing. It's a little bit funny. It gives great occasion for unbelievers to say, oh, you see there, the Bible is full of myth, fable, superstition. No, no, no. The Bible is not teaching that these beliefs are valid. The Bible is teaching that this is what these people believe. God is blessing and God is penalizing and God is overruling, even though these people think that the magic is making these things happen. No, it's not the magic. It's God. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. In, in a couple of weeks in Munich, there's going to be a big, big party. It's called Oktoberfest. I used to live in Munich. I had a little four-year-old son, and I took him to Oktoberfest. I had a colleague who also had a four-year-old son. We took our children to Oktoberfest together. We put them in a little ride and we strapped them in. And on this little ride, which went up and down and around and up and down and around, they had a little steering wheel. And my, my colleague told his son, you hold on to that steering wheel. You turn it the right way. He thought that was funny. He was playing a little trick on his son. 
the son thought that, boy, he had to keep the steering wheel going the right way or he was going to fly off into space. Well, where the ride went had nothing to do with the steering wheel in the child's hands. Even though the child thought he was steering the ride, he wasn't. They thought the mandrakes were making the babies. They thought the wood was making the cattle, but it wasn't. It was God. Okay? Now, these are very strange parts of the Bible. But these people lived a long time ago. They lived over three and a half millennia ago. And they believed a lot of strange things. They believed a lot of People believe strange things today. I've had two people ask me in the last few months, what sign are you? Are you a Scorpio? Oh, I'm so excited that you're a Scorpio. Superstition. Magic. People even believe it today. We shouldn't be surprised that people believed it a long time ago.